Good afternoon. May it please the court. My name is Mike. It is good afternoon now. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Ferrara, and I'm here on behalf of Appellant Deborah Fluger. I believe I only need one minute for rebuttal in this case. My client sought a Class C private investigator license. The uh, Department of Agricultural and Consumer Services denied her that license uh, based on the fact that the uh, the department believed that she did not have two years of lawfully gained verifiable full-time experience in private investigative work or related fields of work. And this case turns substantially on the proper interpretation of Chapter 493, the uh, private investigative private security and repossession services statute. So that statute basically says she has to have had two years of verifiable PI work, college coursework for up to a year, or work as an intern under somebody else's license. That's correct. That would be. So which one of those did she do? The, the first one, Your Honor, which is the two years of private investigative work. Doesn't that contemplate, though, somebody coming back for a relicense and there actually was a license? Well, that PI, and how do you do that without working under somebody who's got a license? Because then you're being a private investigator without a license. So how does that work? The, the statute uses the term private investigative work or related fields of work. That's 493-6203 sub 4, uh, part A. She private didn't work for anybody with a license, so if I recall. That's correct. Okay. She worked, she, for, she worked for a company named Mentier Properties. She searched the public record to locate people who had property that they did not know of that uh, Mentier Properties could then go and purchase, uh, rehab, and either sell or rent out. I believe that that's in the record, and that was due to the department's own investigation that they made that determination. Uh, private investigative work is not a defined term in Chapter 493. However, private investigation is, and I believe that both appellant and appellee are in agreement that what Ms. Fluger engaged in was private investigation. The real question would be, was her private investigation work, which again, I believe appellant and appellee both agree was exceeded two years, was it lawfully gained or not? Uh, unfortunately, in the proceedings below culminating in the final order, I did not argue the statutory exception, which does apply in her case. I find myself a little bit behind the eight ball in this particular circumstance. Uh, she would qualify for statutory exception under 493-6102 sub 3, quote, any individual solely, exclusively, and regularly employed as an unarmed investigator in connection with the business of her or his employer. However, to raise, I would raise that for the first time in the reply brief because it came up for the first time in the answer brief. However, I'm, I admit to this, this court that I did address it for the first time in the reply brief, briefly mentioned it in the proceedings below, but didn't concentrate on it. Because one of the things is that the issue of preservation, if it's preserved below, Understood. then certainly we could consider, and if it's not, we really are hampered to consider that issue. When I submitted the petition for evidentiary hearing, I did reference the statutory exception of uh, 493-6102 generally. And essentially that was it. That's the sole thing that I could point to as far as preserving that matter at this stage of the proceeding. Uh, however, private invest, uh, let me back up. The department is arguing that the, the work experience was not lawfully gained because m my client engaged in private investigation. However, when you look at what a private investigator, let me back up again, uh, private investigation is identifying and locating the current whereabouts of missing persons and owners of their, I'm, I'm sorry, once again, Your Honor, that's, If I could refer to the statute. A private investigator means an individual who for consideration advertises as providing or performs private investigation. Well in this case 
my client worked for a property company. It was not a company that went out and held itself out or advertised as providing for private investigation services. And this is how the statutory exception of 493-6102 uh, comes into play again. She worked exclusively for Mentir Properties, the property rehab company. And the property rehab company did not advertise as providing or performing or performs private investigation. It was, was and is a property company. So what's the public policy behind this statute regulating this particular profession? And, and why has the legislature been so careful to just lay out three categories? Isn't the idea that she would learn under somebody or should be in an educational program to be taught? Because uh, these people basically, you know, mind other people's business, for lack of a better explanation. And there's, I'm sure there's some ethics associated with it and some professionalism involved in it. And if she hadn't been trained in a college setting about this or if she hasn't worked under somebody else with a license, how's she going to learn how to, how's she going to learn these things? The general public policy of Chapter 493 is contained in Title 32, Regulation of Professions and Occupations. And Section 455.2014A, which I quote at the end of my initial brief, says, neither the department nor any board may create any unreasonably restrictive and extraordinary standards that deter qualified persons from entering the various professions. My client has already passed her test already paid her fee, already submitted herself to the background check, already submitted her affidavit and submitted herself to investigation by the department. So she's already done all the other things and as a matter of fact has all the other experience that would be necessary for a class C private investigator license. She just doesn't ha haven't, she just hasn't gotten it under the direction of either a, a program or a mentor who's licensed to tell her she's you know. that's that's true your honor however there are a number of statutory exceptions uh, listed in chapter 493 for people who are not under the direction necessarily of others who can gain the substantially equivalent experience and likewise not have to either be a class CC intern or take a two-year uh, college course or excuse me, a, a college course. The two years is for the internship. So I, I would submit that she would, that, that the Florida legislature does not prevent, prohibit, or even frown on her acquiring her work experience in a way other than as an internship or uh, post, uh, post high school, in other words, college work of, that is listed in 493-6203 for B and C. Yeah. That's all I have, Your Honor. It's a very, it's actually a very straightforward it is, forward yeah. case. It is. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your frankness on the preservation question. <laughs> Good afternoon. May it please the court. Uh, my name is Stacy Bienvenu, and I represent the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. So this lady basically paid the fee, passed the test, has done work that darn sure looks like PI work. Why don't we just give her a license? Because she didn't have an intern license when she uh, performed the work. So what is sub A under 493.6203 sub 4? What is A, the PI work? Because that that's pretty much what they're saying, that she did that kind of work and therefore she qualifies and did it for two years. Right. Well, you heard me explain it the way I understood it, am I right? <laughs> I'm sorry. You heard me explain it to him the way I understood you are, it. You are correct. Well, help me with that though, because it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Why do we have C then, it says you got to work as an intern with a CC license. So how can A and C be the same thing? They're not. Of okay, course, well, tell okay. me the difference. I would say that uh, subsection A says private investigative work or, and I would say that otherwise stated, that could be related fields of work that provided equivalent experience or training. And it's the position of the division that this 
subsection A applies to those categories of persons who fall under the exceptions to licensure. And that would be in 493.6102. And that is the claim that Mr. Farrar has made that his client falls under um, one of the exceptions to licensure. Um, the general rule uh, is that if you perform private investigation as defined in the statutes that you've got to be licensed. The exceptions are categories of people who are either already licensed, such as CPAs, attorneys, banks, you know, small loan companies, or are, are agencies that work strictly for the federal government, or they are um, individuals who perform in-house uh, duties for a company. And that would apply to both security guards and private investigators. So what Mr. Farrar, Farrar has alleged is that his client falls under the exception of an in-house investigator. And because she falls under that exception, then she did not have to have a license to perform that work. So why is he wrong? He's wrong because she really wasn't an in-house investigator. Which I means she, she was doing all kinds of things that investigators do. She was um, checking on titles of things, checking on you know, movements of people, and checking on judgments of people, and checking on other people's business. And that's what PIs do. That's what she was doing. Well, she submitted three categories of work in her affidavit of experience, which was part of her application. And the, uh, the division agreed that her first category of work, which dealt with unclaimed property, fell squarely within the definition of private investigation. So from the division's point of view, we're only looking at that um, category of work. Um, the division has a rule that expands on this statute, the exception statute. It's rule 5N dash 1.100 subsection 3 Florida Administrative Code and it's it defines equivalent ex experience that's set out in um, this subsection a of the exception statute and it says equivalent experience shall mean and include experience which is substantially identical and equal in force power and effect or import as the experience gained um, by personal knowledge and activity for the required period of time pe performing the type of experience permitted under the license for which application is made. And then it gives examples. And those examples are clearly set out in the um, exceptions to licensure um, statute. It also goes on to say that um, Detectives or investigators who have performed, and this is an example, detectives or investigators who have performed such duties as an in-house employee and investigators for attorneys. Um, the term in-house, as defined by Cambridge Dictionaries Online, says involving a company and its employees at a place where they work and not other companies or people who are not regular employees. So an investigator in-house would investigate, let's say that an employee was accused of stealing and that investigator would, would investigate that. Or a prospective employee may apply for employment and they would do an investigation on that person. But here's, here's the catch and this, this helped me understand it. If, you, if any person could work for a company and perform private investigation without a license, then no investigator who worked full time as an employee would have to be licensed. And the intent behind Chapter 493, the general rule, is that if you perform private investigation, you have to have a license, whether you're being trained or you're already a private investigator. 
and the exceptions to licensure ensure that the, that the people in those categories are either not performing private investigation per se, or they're being regulated um, by, for instance, the federal government, or they're being managed by an owner of the company. So if you have, you know, an in-house attorney, which is not an investigator, but, all right, I, I'm sorry, let me back up a bit. Ms. Farrar, in her unclaimed property work, did investigation and contacted other people and said, hey, you have, I think you have unclaimed property with the state of Florida. If you sign this contract and pay this percentage, I will get it for you. So she was performing private investigative work that was for profit for that company involving people outside of the company that she worked for, and therefore she should have had a license. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. It, it may be neither here nor there. When is the exam administered in this process? It is examined. Be, I, I don't deal with that on a daily basis. I'm, I would have to say, at least in this case, it's before the application. I just. I'm, 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 she pays a fee, she does an application, she sits for a test, she passes a test, and then you tell her, sorry, I, okay. Yes. You understand my concern? Yes, I do. Is there any case out there in the state of Florida that deals with this exact same issue? Your Honor, not that I'm aware of. I looked and I, I couldn't find anything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, I'm not related to Ms. Pfluger. Uh, uh, oh, no, I think I'm not related to her. She's just a you, client of mine. No, no, she's not she's, my spouse you, or my sister. I looked down at it, double check. I know. I know. We all, I think we all did that. No, I think she, she <laughs> you missed That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, second, once again, the, the statutory term is private investigative work. It is not private investigation. The private investigative work, it is, uh, it, two years of private investigative work is required. It's not defined in Chapter 493. Uh, the department and I have both concentrated maybe too much on private investigation when in fact, even though what my client has done could be considered private investigation. The actual statute only requires that it be two years of private investigative work. So I believe that there is some room there for the court to consider that my client engaged in the proper work for two years and not get caught up in whether this is private investigation that she should have already been licensed for. I think that the structure of the license regime really doesn't make sense if one of the three things that you need to do to gain the Class C license is already have a Class C license. It just it doesn't make it doesn't make logical sense. Even though I have to admit in the footnote in the answer brief, they pointed out that theoretically somebody could have lost their license years ago and then use the prior experience while having that license as that two years of, of lawfully gained private investigative work. And third, finally, it's the department's position, they put it forth in their answer brief, that my client is or may be guilty of a first degree misdemeanor for researching the public record and providing that information to her employer. And I don't think that the Florida statutes should be interpreted in a way that a person doing her job by looking on the internet at public records could somehow be guilty of a first degree misdemeanor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you both. Very interesting case. <laughs> Thank you. It's certainly a little lighter than some of the other ones. Yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> it's good. We Very are good. adjourned. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you.
The wizard felt a little bit to the ball. Thank you. 